Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about position, distance, and displacement, and then just a bit on average speed and velocity. Let's tackle the first three. The first thing you need to do anytime you need to describe motion is set up a coordinate system. How do we go about doing that? Well, you should be thinking of three things. One, define your axes. For a standard Cartesian setup, these would be your x-axis and y-axis, and then later maybe your z-axis. Once you've figured out the direction of these, your second step is to define your origin. This can be wherever you see fit. For this example here, we have it at x equals zero. The third thing you need to do is decide on a scale. Once you've done that, you should be in a good position to visualize your problem a bit easier and be in a better place to move forward. Looking at our example, your serial origin to the left, then you'll see the initial and final positions of our object, which are of course important to note down, and then an arrowhead there at the end. I'm sure you've seen this part numerous times, but it bears repeating that this helps us define which direction we're assigning as a positive. So here it's pointing to the left, right's are positive, and that means that to the left here, it's our negative. So let's focus on one dimensional kinematics for today. With this, we know that motion will be either up or down or side to side, or in other words, on our x and y axis. And with these, just a reminder that when dealing with these situations, as mentioned before, the origin can be wherever you wish. Place it wherever you think it might make your problem easier. So not necessarily here at x equals zero. All right, let's remind ourselves about distance. Distance is a scalar quantity, which you can compare to a position, which is at uh, a vector quantity. As we reviewed before, uh, this means that the latter, our vector quantity, will have both magnitude and direction. Let's look at this uh, diagram here to help us understand this. Distance purely means how much you may travel regardless of any positive or negative direction on your axis, right here. So knowing this, let's do a quick practice problem. Let's say you walked from your friend's house to your house and then back to your friends. What would be the distance that you traveled? Well, the answer would be 4.2 miles. You've got 2.1 this way and then another 2.1 back, 4.2. So now let's look at displacement. Displacement contrary to distance is a vector quantity. This means we take into account direction, which you will use uh, your chosen axis components to label as positive or negative. Um, let's see, and mathematically, yeah, displacement is simply your initial position right here subtracted from your final. And this resultant vector is defined right here delta x, um, and this sign is going to point in the direction from your initial to final. So if this is positive, this answer right here, it's going to be pointing to the right as you just find that as your positive. If the solution right here is negative, it'll be pointing to your left. So let's do an example. The same as the last side. You take a round trip between houses. What should your displacement be? Well, it should be zero. You're zero miles away from where you started by the time you ended your journey. You've been displaced zero miles. All right, so here we have various ways you might see distance represented in the world of physics. You've got these right here, D, L, depending on where you learn it. And then note for displacement down here, it's a little more complicated, but you're generally gonna see your Greek letter delta right here, and then our arrows to indicate our vectors on the top. Uh, make sure to pay attention to context when dealing with these 1D vectors because uh, it's not uncommon for vector identifiers to be dropped for the sake of cleanliness, but they're still vectors, so make sure to keep that in mind when you're doing these problems. So naturally, uh, you're also going to be working past one-dimensional cases and go on to two-dimensional ones. Uh, but for now, when we've passed the 2D, um, just want you to keep in mind that they're most definitely out there. All right, so let's quickly cover average speed and velocity. We now know how to talk about motion. The next step is how fast that motion is. We define average speed as the distance traveled divided by the time it took, and this value is a scalar. So let's look at the diagram. Some might say that the average speed here at first glance is 40 miles an hour, but is that the correct assumption? Let's work it out. 
So let's follow the math. So why 40? Some people say there's 30 here, 50 here. Right in the middle, it might be 40. But that would be a very uh, quick glance sort of solution. And we want to do the math out here. So our formula, speed equals distance over elapsed time. We have this right here, four miles for this portion of your journey, where you're going 30 miles an hour at T1, and four miles for this portion, where you're going 50 at T2. So we have our distance. We've got four plus four right here for the both of these. And now we're just looking for our T values. We know T equals distance over speed. So let's try and figure out what these variables are. T1 would be the four over 30 right here, four hours over 30. And then T2, same thing, just with a 50, 4 over 50. We plug this in over here, you do the math out, and you're going to get your average speed is actually 37.5 miles an hour. So close to 40, but definitely not 40. All right, let's wrap up with velocity. We should all know the definition. It tells us how fast something moves and the direction it's moving. And we can also see it mathematically here with, you know, average velocity equals displacement over elapsed time. And then we see it down here with the notation we mentioned earlier, delta x over delta t, uh, your x final minus x initial over t final minus t initial. As opposed to speed, uh, you guys should note that average velocity is a vector. So ask yourself why. And in the following examples, um, we're going to know that uh, for any situation, your average velocity for a round trip is going to be zero. So why is that? Let's see. Let's look at our equations, right? We define average velocity as displacement over time, right? And we found earlier that displacement is zero for a round trip. Remember, you're displaced by zero miles by the end, even though you didn't move. Um, so thus, zero here in the numerator over whatever your t is, average velocity for a round trip is always going to be zero. 